So take me back, take me back, oh. You're watching Escape Adulthood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this week's show, we're talking about finding hearts in nature and chatting with early childhood specialist Lisa Murphy about the importance of play and what we all can learn from kids during these trying times. Greetings and salutations, everyone. Thank thanks you. for being here tonight. Yeah, thanks for shenanigating with us. We have such a good show. I know many of you have already seen who we have with us tonight, Lisa Murphy. It's a, it's a good one. Yes. It's a good one. You, an adult-itis. Uh, today, you know, from our Celebrate Everything calendar, today is Underwear Day, um, which our kids were just cracking up about all day. We weaved it into the whole day, as you can imagine. <laughs> as, you, as you would, normally. <laughs> And so we were joking at dinner that tonight is the night where you have to give adultitis like this big wedgie. Yeah. Right? Seems, I mean, seems appropriate, right? <laughs> uh, ben, I, uh, Jason, you don't even know this, but Ben, they were doing Play Doh out on the deck today. It was beautiful here in Wisconsin. And Ben did a Play Doh underwear mold of like legs and underwear. And I'm like, I think this is cool. I don't know. This is so strange, but it was pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty good. I wish I would have seen it. Underwear day, you know? Underwear day. Yeah. I, well, you know, Jenna is the one who goes through and finds the holidays. And some holidays are the same every year, but every year on the calendar, we mix it up. And so there are certain days where it's kind of sl slim pickings. And, uh, <laughs> That might have been underwear day. Or like maybe not a lot it was of other the top of the on. list. Could, I mean, it just maybe. depends on how you look at it. So, speaking of top of the list, I am excited about this guy. He oh just he gosh. just arrived today, baby Yoda, the child with with a uh, cup. So with uh, his little bone broth, his little bone broth soup. So he's our little mascot of the day. Yes, but you know adorable. we're gonna get to our guests real quick here. But we had to uh, we have to bring up something that's a bit of a bone of contention between us oh, uh, yes. you know with it being summertime here in the northern hemisphere one of the most popular summertime activities are campfires making s'mores which roasting includes marshmallows. roasting marshmallows mm -hmm. and so uh this it's time to settle this debate we got this graphic here which shows six shades of uh the toastiness yes. i guess one is pretty much apparently no out of the bag and eat it. it in your mouth. Right? And then six yeah. looks like it went through uh, seven <laughs> levels of hell. It's just black and charred. So we, di surprisingly, we disagree about this. You any know. any dessert related thing we disagree yes, on. Everything. So we're going to ask you guys in the comment right now. I'm seeing we got people from Kansas, Minnesota, Elgin, Illinois, Wisconsin. We've got a ton of people coming in here. Yeah. Um, Weigh in on this. Mm -hmm. so, Our, uh, yeah, wait, I'm gonna, tell me I'm yours. I'm going to always be leaning in the 3-4 range, you know. Um, so I'm kind of the middle. I don't really want it to be completely charred, but I do like a nice little toast on it so it's warm throughout and get a melt in my mouth, right? Yeah, I like mine to be black, charred, <laughs> just that that charcoal taste, you know. That's what I like with the ooey. Ooey gooey, gooey in gooey. the middle. This all ties some in. Of, some of you will get oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that I didn't even plan that. Uh, yeah, so what, what, what do we got? We got three to four, three. Uh, Cindy says three. Uh, okay. Oh, your soda's going to get thing. in the way there. Here we go. We got some fours. Okay, so three to four is Team Kim. No, so. I got to close up this. Okay, Lori. Yes. Pa right. Paul says ten. I, I don't even know. There's a, a, ashes. I don't know if that's ashes. Uh, Angela's in, in at four. Nice. 
Jason. Kimberly, Bennett Tice, Team Jason. I appreciate that. <laughs> ben says, yeah, Kim. I disagree wholeheartedly. Yeah, yeah Ben. Suzanne, yeah. number six. She is on the, the charred list. That's good. <laughs> Victoria says, melty in the middle. Okay, so that would be that's, Team Kim. I, I, I think that's... Oh, you're, you're just going to assume that? Up. You're, you're just burned up in the middle. I don't think you're uh, melting. We're going we're gonna to ask Lisa in a second what she thinks of this. But we, we'll keep this debate going because uh, clearly this is one of the most important debates our nation is having right now <laughs> that we need to get to the bottom of. And I think we should all do the homework and get a bag of marshmallows soon and yeah. just kind of test it out. Make sure, maybe try one you haven't tried in a while. Right? So far, I'm scrolling through this again. We did have Paul with a 10, but so far I have no one that's saying one, yeah. which is basically pull out of the bag, I which I'm, I, I appreciate that. Right? I was, I was going to be really disappointed if people are saying that they... <laughs> Don't even have any color on it at all. So uh, that's good to know. All right, let's let's uh, let's move on to the main event here, shall we? Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. This okay, you guys. Treat, you guys. Seriously. I have to share something here. Um, some of you will get this, all right? This is a, <laughs> a little meme that our guest shared recently on her Facebook page and it says it all you know some people this is going to go right over your head Crayola versus Rose Art but for those of you in the know you realize how important and true this uh <laughs> this meme is that tell them about kindergarten we've well, been a kindergarten yes. teacher you know there was the required uh purchase list for the parents and we as a kindergarten team of four of us classrooms you know eventually decided that we needed to put on there that crayola is the required crayon and then i think we did put in parentheses at one point not no art. <laughs> and usually it was the new parents you know that um maybe just hadn't experienced much rose art in their life which God bless you. You know, I mean, that's that's wonderful if you haven't been exposed too much to Rose Art. But yeah. consider but, yourself blessed. Right. But for those, you know, more, uh, you know, the kids were like the youngest in the family. Oh, oh, no, we would never get you Rose Art. But we did have some resistance to those newer parents, of course. Su Sue they're says, cheaper. I get it. They're Su cheaper. Sue says Crayola, Crayola all the way. You've got Christy <laughs> says Rose Art should not even be in stores. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Stanfield McMillan says Rose Art. <laughs> right? And she knows. She would know right. too. Yes, she would. So, okay. So let us bring on uh, the main event here. We we ha we are excited to have uh, Lisa Murphy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read this here quick. Lisa, I don't remember when we first met Lisa. It was it was a while ago. We we were on the same um, program uh, for uh, some sort of conference. It's the first time I got to see her. She has been in the field of early childhood for over 30 years, and she has written five books, worked in many different kinds of early childhood settings, and has operated centers and family child care homes. And up until the worst Friday the 13th ever, <laughs> COVID, was on the road 250 plus days a year, doing workshops all over the world legit, on the importance Lisa. of play. Wow. Lisa, thank you for joining us. Yes. How are you this evening? I'm awesome. And, you know, I know before we started, I was like, I'm going to follow your lead. But after listening to that, I've got like 15 things that I need to say. Um, <laughs> you got to weigh in on the, the marshmallows and I the rose weigh in art. On marshmallows. I got to weigh in on underwear day. Um, because if you had told me, I might have changed my outfit. I mean, we, but but here's the tie into that. I was listening to my NPR station here uh, locally, and they actually said that it was also Oyster Day. So when you were talking about Underwear Day, I'm thinking oysters, like a little mermaid action. I'm thinking I really needed to re rethink my outfit this evening. And then you jump to marshmallows. Okay, so here's I'm a I'm a weird ten. I'm a weird ten. I want to char it, but then I peel off the char. I char it again, and then I put the whole thing into the fire. I don't oh eat. I don't eat. God. I don't eat marshmallows. Ah, in the daylights, I have a ritual of burning them. And uh, so you just like to enjoy. You're more of a pyromaniac more than anything. Bit. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, okay. We, could, we could say that. <laughs> and when else do you really get to burn things up, and it's socially acceptable? Right. Yeah. And, and but, but and people, it's funny to watch actually um, the social reactions to that. They're like, you're not. You're 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 not going to eat that. Like, nope. <laughs> nope 
peel off, burn it again. Give me another marshmallow. You can't have another marshmallow. <laughs> That is interesting. That is funny. I yeah. love that. I love it's it when a, you totally break the whole rule. It's like, yeah. no, I'm not eating this, you guys. So I can do whatever I want with it. I'm not eating it. If you want it, I'll, I'll gladly let you eat it. But I, I, I don't eat marshmallows. I think, well, that's part of it for me is the, I. it's not that I don't like the like perfectly browned, yeah. but it takes so long and you get it like almost perfect and then it catches on fire anyway. So, so I'm just like, just cut to the chase. Cut out the middle, man. The chase. Right. All right, I gotta say we've got uh, Ben is uh, is uh, commenting and he says read one of your articles, Lisa. This is an honor. Aww. So uh, thank you. Does Ben people... have a last name? But I know Ben Ch Cheseldine. I'm not I sure do how not to know say that his last name. name but... Thanks, Ben. Yeah, that's very curious cool. as to what article that was, but we can circle back to that perhaps. Yeah, yes. if you want to tell us more about it. Okay, so one of the reasons we wanted to have you on is because. We're in August. We're heading towards a uh, school year and or what the a school what? year, yeah, who, <laughs> you know, who What's knows what that will look like. And there's a lot of, oh, man. A lot of parents uh, and communities freaking out justifiably. So there's just a lot of uncertainty. And anytime there's uncertainty, there's anxiety. And then there's people freaking out. And, uh, you know, you have such a unique background being so entrenched in child development and obviously a focus on on young children but that's the foundation and it applies to all i think a lot of learning development so like what what advice do you have for parents for grandparents who are like i don't know how to how to best help these kids if i have to be the teacher i can't be the teacher if they if it's a virtual how am i supposed to support that how am i like there's just a lot of anxiety a lot of panic is and there burnout. anything there's a lot of burnout yeah after yeah. this how right. the spring ended up like right. can you speak a little bit of peace into people's lives i think you can and a little bit of of sense well i i appreciate that from you um i i kind of can go in two directions i have the lisa murphy snarky out the gate which is open the door let them go outside let them play let them spend time in their room in the living room in the in the garage in the basement in the driveway on the deck in the courtyard and let them play right i i mean that we can unpack that probably you know for three other of your of your shows right yeah I, I'm worried that as a culture, we have forgotten how powerful free play actually is. And I can get on a, not even a soapbox, but I mean, I can get on the stage and talk about the science and the data and the research that supports long periods of uninterrupted free time for children to be exploring and how that is so um, crucial to uh, meeting all of the developmental domains, right? Cognitive, language, literacy, emotional, social, and physical. Um, so, I mean, I can say that. And I can also talk about, you, you know, like I could get a little deeper, like right out the gate, you know, about Maslow and the hierarchy of needs. And if we're concerned about basic needs being met, food, shelter, clothing, the lights being on, it's too hot, the AC might be turned off, uh, we got a reprieve on our rent, but that's going to be going away. You know, that, it doesn't matter. So that, that vision of the triangle and, and uh, you know, I don't want to oversimplify his work, and but nor do I want to insult your tribe, but, you know, Maslow had a triangle and he said at the top was self-actualization. And I equate that with the curriculum and the programming, but none of that matters at all. Whether you're doing it at home, whether you're doing it at school, whether it's a virtual, whether it's a mix, none of that matters at all if people are hungry or tired or stressed or frustrated. Right. And so I think we need to give everybody permission to be wherever they are on that continuum. He uses a triangle. You could do it this way. It doesn't matter. You can't be so overly focused on what is next or tomorrow or next week or next year if we're overly preoccupied with what's unfolding literally right in in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, Eric, okay, go on, sorry. No, I was going to say the social, social emotional health, I feel like especially in May when everybody was just like, ah, you know, I, I feel like that was totally put in the closet as far as a priority. And, and that, was, that was just breaking my heart, to be honest, of like these kids. I mean, I talk about the the upheaval of emotion, let alone 
um, maybe the stressors in the house that you indicated. But um, but I appreciate hearing that because it is one of those things I'm like, I don't know that I've heard very many people talking about that at right. all. You well, know? I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, I, I reached a point of deciding that I needed to be a little more self-disclosing with some of the people online that I was interacting with. And most of my tribe is familiar, right, with Maslow, right? right? And and so I was able to say very point blank, dude, I'm not even at the bottom rung. I'm in Maslow's basement <laughs> right now. I'm in the basement right. and I'm like, where's the freaking ladder right. for me to start figuring this out? And so people are like, what are you gonna do with all this free time? I'm like, this is not free time. This is me like in survival mode, right? right. And and I think it's I think we need to remember that even even though we might not have our fingers on the pulse of some of the child development theory, I'm pretty sure that your your folks listening and watching tonight maybe know somebody who is who maybe can right. throw them some little nuggets, right? So there's this guy named Eric Erickson, and he talks about the first stage uh, of being trust versus mistrust, and then you grow, right? Autonomy and shame and doubt until you get to an adult, and it's about you know how how much have I contributed to the society. And I've had a colleague, Dan Hodgins, who said, you know, Lisa, when we do get back together, especially in schools, we're going to be back at that trust versus mistrust. Mm -hmm. You can be 40, 50, 60. It doesn't matter. We're going to be at that space of not even going back to school, but but going out to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Trust. Right. And I in a position right yeah. now, emotionally yeah. and socially, yeah. that I trust that you are doing you know, not to turn this into a COVID conversation, because I know no. that's what, not what you were looking to do, but just remembering that just because we've gotten older and more mature doesn't mean that we don't occasionally come back to some of those earlier layers of development. And I honestly don't, it doesn't matter what kind of hat you have on professionally or what your interests are. I think there's a an understanding that we all we, we all are plugged into these stages of development and it's okay to realize that right now we all might be a little bit back. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe yeah. you can explain this. Oh, sorry. But we actually both experience, especially March, April, and May, this desire for nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a really positive childhood experience. We both had positive childhood experiences that we were kind of going back to old music or going back to old movies. And we didn't want new. We wanted old comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you would be able to. Yeah. Do so like even when in, in a preschool setting or childcare, because that's, that's, you know, that's the lens I'm bringing to, yeah. to this, this evening. You'll see four-year-olds that go back to something. And oftentimes parents will be like, oh, no, you know, it's a regression. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. 99% of the time it's the child reminding themselves this is when I was comfortable. This is when I was solid. This is when I knew exactly what was going on. This is when I could, I could breathe, mm, right? I, I, I was, I was cool with what was going on. Mm -hmm. And then that, that refueling, so to speak, mm -hmm. that allowed me to take that next step. And so to specifically to what you guys were saying, you were going back to what you knew. It was solid. It was comforting. It was familiar. It was healthy. I'm mm -hmm. guessing based on what you just just mm -hmm. shared, mm -hmm. and that's going to refuel me literally from the ground up, right? And allow me to then face the uncertainty, right? Like I might not have a plan for what's out there right. or what you know at all, but this is keeping me full, right? Yeah. That idea yeah. of filling filling yourself up and not just with the rocks, but then with the sand and then with the right. pebble mm -hmm. and with the water, because there's always room for more. Yeah. Keep ourselves full socially, yeah. emotionally, psychologically. I, I was going to say, I think that the, um, you talk about the, the hierarchy of needs and it's like, if you were at the top of the triangle, I think, you know, COVID knocked us all down. Oh, yeah. So like oh, yeah. anybody that, who tells you different is lying. to Yeah. Your face. So that care. feeling right. of right. disorientation is, yeah. is, is okay to feel one of the things I want to ask you because you know you talked at the very beginning about like the, about play like open the door let them go mm -hmm. and I think um you know the people <laughs> I've seen the the comments of like let us all play I know, like Paul, soapbox you know yeah. all that but I think uh many parents and maybe the, hopefully this this the, the replay and this will be able to be shared to other people who are uh maybe need to hear this but I think the idea of giving parents permission to let the kids play maybe is perceived as like, okay, I know I 
don't need to overdo it. But I, I think it's more they don't they don't actually believe that that's enough. They feel like, OK, thank you for giving me permission not to freak out. But that's really not enough to just let my kids play. And so maybe if you could spend a minute or two talking about, no, no, no that that is in it, many ways what they're not we getting. A minute or two, because he's like, you know, we've we've got somewhere <laughs> else to be. Um, so I'll, I'll speak to this um, very specifically. It depends, honestly, how old you are. Mm -hmm. as to how you're going to either respond mm -hmm. to what I say or I need to reframe what I'm about to say. So I'm 50. I'll be 51 mm -hmm. in October. If you're maybe 10 years under me and definitely older than me, this is what you had. Right. You know, not to be all like, you know, pining for the good old days, but <laughs> right. we, 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 we had that. It, not that it's good or bad or whatever, but right. you know, you were told to go play and be home at a certain, you know, when the street lights came on and, and sometimes people think like that really happened. I'm like, yeah, that kind of really happened. So we have this memory. Say, so yeah, I'll, I'll get to the point. You have something you can tap into. Mm -hmm. So when I talk to audiences who are younger, whether they have kids or they're teachers, it doesn't matter if you don't have something to go back to a memory to lock and load on, it's very, very difficult to trust or to give or to facilitate that which you did not receive your own self. Hmm. So some of my audiences, some of the parents I work with, some of the teachers I work with, you have to consciously and intentionally give them environments where they can actually kind of play, kind of like, you know, what your message is, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm actually activating my play gene, my play DNA, because maybe my school experience, my childcare experience, my home life, it doesn't matter, but I didn't get that. Mm -hmm. So now when somebody like Lisa Murphy says, well, open the door and let them go play, you have a percentage, I'm guessing, of your people listening tonight who are like, I don't even know what that looks like. Right. You know, and it's not a judgment at all. No. It's just like, how, how do you actually give back that which you didn't receive unless somewhere along the way you consciously inserted that almost into your own experience so you'd be familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, so a little bit of it is a leap of faith, mm -hmm. you know, so I watched Lisa, on, you know, <laughs> Kim and Jason's show and she said, it's okay for this to happen. Maybe I'll give it an hour mm -hmm. and see what happens. Maybe I'll not interrupt their play in the living room for an hour. Right. So, you know, being gentle and baby stepping, um, but, but trusting, I think the process, trusting the children and not to get overly, you know, technical, but trusting the research we've got 40, right. 50, 60 years of, of research and not just anecdotal evidence of like, you know, <laughs> empirical peer reviewed research right. that says that play is the vehicle for everything that you think you're wanting your children to have, or everything you, you're wanting your children to have or to experience or to be ready for. Yeah. That's, I think that's right. what a lot of, I mean, I, hear from preschool teachers, kindergarten teachers who are frustrated because that is not actually what's happening anymore in the schools. And I, one of the things we talk about is what are, what is the opportunity in this moment? So there's a lot of crap and oh, I'll anxiety. Tell you, I've, but, been doing, I've been doing interviews with people about this since March 15th, <laughs> right. which is that you know, and, and forgive me for sound because, and I, I don't know a lot of your, your viewers and I never want to unintentionally, you know, uh, offend anybody. Nobody would ever wish a pandemic upon anybody. Right. right. Duly noted. And there are specific to early childhood, some things that are coming out of this that should have been coming at, should have been happening mm -hmm. even before the pandemic. We That's as an cool. industry, needed a recalibration to bring us back to center of what is developmentally appropriate and play-based and best practice for a long time. The thing that has happened is that COVID has shed a very big light on some stuff that should have started changing years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think so people are feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so I am telling my tribe, my folks, and mm -hmm. a lot of affirming, it's not like me telling them. It's right. like, guys, we've drifted and that's fine. Everybody drifts, every profession, everybody listening, you've drifted at some point in your life, in your career away from what you know is best practice. This is an opportunity to 100% recalibrate, to come back to center and to be very much more mindful as to what you're letting in. Mm -hmm. 
What are we letting in to our homeschool situation? What are we letting in to the childcare environment? What are we letting in to the kindergarten? Did we drink the Kool-Aid of too much commercialization, too much pre-canned curriculum, too much overly scheduled time? You know, what did we drink the Kool-Aid of? Okay, noted. And I'm changing my mind. Mm -hmm. And I'm using this as a reboot point. Control, alt, delete, mm -hmm. right? restart. Right. Which, and it's so weird. I know we've said this so many times um, that we all get to do it at the same time, which makes it really stressful. But it also gives us all permission to use the same language because we all kind of understand each other's position in some way, which gives us a certain amount of permission to just break Agreed. some old rules that we're not serving anyone, right? Yeah. And so. kind of like the old days, like, did your parents ever tell you, um, like, if you don't want to go do something, like, use me? Like, mom says, yes. I can't go. Right. So, right. Dude, use right. that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because of COVID, we've kind of re-examined everything. Like, yeah. you don't need to get on a laundry list of soapbox. And no, because of COVID, we've had to completely revamp and rethink everything that right. we've done and look at, like, the what's on the outside mm -hmm. of this. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. I it's going to be beautiful, but we need to harness it, right? We need to harness it. Yeah. We need to not be asking for approval right. in order to do this. I think we need to get t-shirts that just say because COVID. <laughs> right. And it's like, it's an excuse we can all use for at least five years. We can get out of this, right? <laughs> you know, because of COVID, we realized that 20 minute chopped up time blocks in a pre-K is not mm -hmm. appropriate. You know, because of COVID, we realized that kids need a lot more outdoor playtime, you know, because of COVID. Well, I think that's yeah. what's kind of interesting. And I hope, I hope by bringing you on as an expert that people oh, that. can, like that. <laughs> <laughs> that people can connect the dots here. Because what I'm hearing, when I hear you talk, I know that you're coming from the experience of pre-K, early childhood development, things like that. But I, I think of, uh, my 11 year old daughter who um, has freedom in her schedule to what I call play, but maybe what other people wouldn't think of as play mm -hmm. to explore things just in the same way that a four year old does. And when you talk about going outside, I think of when COVID first hit and we would go on walks around the neighborhood and we would see full families mm -hmm. going like out and walking <laughs> into the parks and around the neighborhood. Right. And so these principles, although are are based in fact and research for for three-year-olds, four-year-olds, the principles are for all of us. And I hope people sure. are able to make that connection that it's like, oh, I don't know a four-year-old. I don't have little kids. Or I don't, it's like, it's yeah. the need for play looks different depending on how old we are, but it's, but the conditions of play are still there. So for your non-ECE people, if I may, yeah. so early childhood education is defined as birth to age eight. So we've already encompassed like birth until second, you know, second, third grade, depending mm -hmm. on, on where you're located. However, I, I've always said that the play continuum, it's womb to tomb. I have said that since day one womb to tomb, to plug Peter Gray and to do a little name drop for somebody that I very much admire and look up to. Um, he talks about the conditions of play freely done or excuse me, freely chosen. And I can quit when I'm done that the ends, you know, the, 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 the ends just, no, the, the process versus the product. Let yep. me say it the more comfortable with saying it. that it might not look like play to somebody walking by, but the person is 100% totally engaged in it. And in his book, Free to Learn, he unpacks some of the real subtle nuances. Like, And, and these are not his examples, so forgive me. I'm not trying to quote him. But like, I could be painting a wall and be 100% engaged in a playful enterprise mm -hmm. because I, I chose to do it. If I wanted to take a break, I could. I'm pleased with what's going on. I'm totally in the zone. I'm not distracted. I'm not worried if I spill a little bit on the, you know, the, 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 the line. I don't know what that, the, the mar, the molding. Yeah. I don't know this kind of language, but, <laughs> but I, I'm engaged. I'm in a playful right. spirit, right? Versus somebody engaged in a pickup basketball game or playing tennis who was like, my God, I wish that I was somewhere else. Right. And so it might look like to an observer walking by, oh, they're playing tennis, but that person doesn't want to be there at all. Right. And so I really do think there's room to investigate. Um, Peter Gray lists five 
criteria conditions of play. And I think when we get better and more, more, more astute at saying, Oh, mm, did I freely choose this? Could I stop if I wanted to do it? Then it allows us, he, he says that as we get to be more as an adult, it's more of a, a degree of playfulness as opposed to when we all look at kids, whether we have kids or not. I don't have kids, but I've worked with kids all my life. But you look at children, and you're like, oh, that's play. Well, how do you know it's play? Well, I can just tell it's play. Well, how do you translate that to as adults? Hmm. Yeah. Does it, does it just look like play? You know, because right. you can be having fun and not be engaged in play. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if anyone on the chat right now wants to ask a question, we can try to make time for that. Um, put a If you put a cue in front of your question so it makes it easier for me to see it, that would be great. Um, I, I was wondering if you had any, again, you work with kids nonstop and, and people who work with kids. Like what, one of the things that I joke about um, but is not actually a joke, is that I am a professional reminderer, -er, that I'm reminding people <laughs> of stuff they already know, but forget. Oh, like what are some of the, what is something that you see that kids nail that we grown ups could learn during a time like this? Slowing down. Mm. Slow down. America, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm guessing you have an international reach. The United States needed to be kicked off of the treadmill that it was on. And especially because it was pushing the treadmill mentality down onto the youngest of children. Right. And yep. there was the sense that as it, the busier we were, the more productive we were. Um, and, and, you know, not to turn this into the Peter Gray, you know, like, Whoa! but he, he released some of the initial findings from a study that was done, um, and some data that was gathered with his colleague, Lenore Skenazi and talking about, you know, kids are saying, this has allowed me to be more creative, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, so don't over quote me. Um, but this is all on his Facebook page. You can go get it your own self of, I, I got bored. I had to figure stuff out. I been allowed to do stuff on my own. You know, my parents are letting me do things. Do I miss my friends at school? Of course I do. But I've also learned a little bit more about myself. I'm eating more regularly. I'm having conversations with my family. And, and I think the, the sleep factor, that's a whole other workshop that we need to unpack. Right. Kids are sleeping more. Yeah. Which we don't realize just how important that actually is. And now granted, I'm not saying everybody's having the best night's sleep, you know, for the last right. three or four months. Sure. But I am saying that for the most part, children are able to be a little bit more in tune with their natural rhythm. Right. Um, and when you're when you are in a homeschooling environment, I think you are able to plug into that a lot more organically and authentically. Um, you know, if you if you're waking up at nine in the morning but then you're also, you're now not stressed. You're not, not even stressed. That's not the right word. You're awake. Yeah. That right. Body said it was time to wake up. Yeah. You um, got refueled. Well, that's a good example because we have three kids ages six to 11 and they all have different body rhythms and they all wake up at different times and two of them are really extreme, mm -hmm. but we just let them, you know, In opposite ways. Right. <laughs> right. Of course. Um, but it's kind of neat to be able to let them do that and let them find that rhythm and they all wake up pretty happy, which yeah. is kind of cool, you know? So I see we have some good yeah, we questions got a question here. In. Uh, yeah. Shonda, my favorite part. Yeah. Shonda says, Lisa, what do you do for play? Ooh, good question. Oh, I love that. Um, I read, I walk, um, I um, talk to people like this. This is very playful for me. I cook like you don't even know. Really? I, I, oh yeah, yeah. That's that's the. It's not a secret side of me, but yeah, I I am crazy in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I love I love to cook. Um, I like to sing. Uh, I don't do it well, um, but yeah, I'm I'm aware of when I don't refuel myself. So to me, the playfulness. Um, Sometimes when people see me do a workshop and they see that energy that I give to the adult learner, they think that that's how I am all the time in real life. <laughs> and, and that would be hard. Third, um, well, it's passion. So yeah. when yeah. I'm on stage talking with you, even right now, like, like I'm sweating. I'm, I'm not going to show you that. But I mean, I, this is what I live to do. Right. But children don't necessarily need that from us. So I've, I've actually surprised people along the way when I've said, if you walked into the classroom, 
you wouldn't know that I was even there because mm. kids don't need that energy right. from an adult. Typically, you know, I'm there to set the scene. So, um, my, but parent, my, but adults think they do. That's oh, when you, when I see man. a speaker come in with kids, like, ah, you know, and I'm like, I just, you know, honestly, you know. I don't want to offend anybody watching, but yeah. that is one of the most insulting patronistic. Oh, I, 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 it's patronizing. I can't stand that. I get embarrassed. I yeah. usually will have to leave because like they don't need that from you. Right. I am very much a facilitator guide on the side, not the sage on the stage. I don't need that energy. I could create my own energy, right? I, I don't need to give all of that to you because that's also me assuming that you need it. That's right. me assuming that you can't be generating that your own self. And that's, that's not my, my job. Um, I love show tunes. So I forget the name of the woman that you said, asked the question, but, Sound um, uh, Shonda, I have show tunes in my head 24 <laughs> seven. And, um, my boyfriend thinks I'm a lot like Linda on Bob's burgers. So I think maybe that's my alter ego. <laughs> All right. We got Great a answers. question uh, from Rachel. She says a lot of my parent peers are worried about how much social <laughs> easy for me to say socialization is going to be missed. At what age do they really need to be with others and for how much time? Ooh, I can't wait to hear your answer to this, Lisa. Well, it, that's a very, you're not going to like my answer because it's going to be very unique to the family unit, the neighborhood unit. Um, in, in a lot of neighborhoods, neighborhood pop-up schools are happening, which I can't wait to see how this happens. Um, yeah, like, like literally knocking on doors with their mask on, standing away, going like, Hey, do you got kids here? Um, because <laughs> I don't want them to go back with 300 kids, but let's see what's going on in the neighborhood. And maybe we can figure something out. Like, yeah. I love the creativity. Pop up schools. Um, That's cool. Wow. It's, it's amazing. It's like pop up neighborhood co-op school. And, um, so I, I think the social, I don't know, it's, this is a tricky, this is a tricky question. It depends on who's in the household. It depends on who do they have maybe tech, you know, relationships with. My nephew turned one in June and they're 3000 miles away. He has only ever known a lot of us through this, right? Mm -hmm. And so if this is happening, granted it's, it's not my first choice, but for right now, at least there's some kind of connection happening. I would actually maybe suggest to Rachel to bring it up to connecting and caring and not get so locked and loaded on the word like social interaction because this is still being social. We're physically distant, but socially we're still in, in connection as much as we possibly can be. And if your bubble, if you've got a bubble, then you can be with your bubble and you can be less than six feet away and you mm -hmm. cannot have your mask on, mm -hmm. you know? So, so maybe you work on making a bubble a little bit bigger, you know, yeah. precautionary and do your due diligence and whatnot, but, but maybe it's time to create a bubble. Um, one of the, one of the first things I said back in like March was you got to think of it as physical distancing, not social distancing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, yep. Is this my primary, is this my favorite form of communicating? Well, no, you know, I'd love to be sitting right there at that table because I want to touch that baby Yoda's head so bad. Um, but this is what we've got and this is what we're going to be able to do for right now, which is still connecting. Well, and one of the things I'm going to say we remind people yeah. of is the opportunity to be more intentional about the connections and the relationships that we have, that, that sometimes school isn't always the most uh, healthy um, interact interactivity between uh, kids and stuff. So one of the things we see with our kids is neighbors. So they have an adopted grandmother across the street that's 80 years old and she's a widow and, and they take her dog for a walk and they bring her cookies and vice versa. She brought us cookies the other day. And, you know, so just these relationships that aren't age, same age is my yeah. point, you know, the intergenerational gift of each other that I think it was much more prevalent when we were kids, right? There was just more of a community aspect of like, oh, you know, old woman or what, what you know, you could kind of picture the old TV shows of like old lady Johnson, you know, and <laughs> in the neighborhood. Don't touch my flowers. Right. <laughs> you know, your mother. But everybody looked out for each other. And I think maybe people are hungry for that again. Yeah. You All know, right. something I found too, and I know you want to get to another question, but um, in my neighborhood right here, like specifically, Three different three different families moved in during COVID. Oh my god! What a horrible 
horrible time, right? right? Whether you're a social butterfly or not, that's a hard time to be, you know, like, hey, can you help me unload the, the, the couch? Or, right. And one of them had a kid and we're like waving it across the street. But I like to think that those connections are still, you know, able to happen. You know, maybe they're not as physically or not as, you know, maybe, you know, the proximity, right? We're not, you know, right. I'm not getting up into the little kid's baby's face. I'm not saying, oh, let right. me rub your face. <laughs> right. You know, but, but I'm at least letting you know that I am an ally, right? When that does happen, that the crazy lady down the street who puts chalk out at the end of the driveway, Aww. I've given chalk away to so many kids Aww. and bubbles to so many kids because I don't know if they'll use it, but to me, it's like, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a bridge to show that just because you might have to spend all day in your house doesn't mean that you can't still like know who's around you. Yeah. We need to move into Lisa's neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got we got awesome. one more question. If you got time for it, Lisa, you got. Oh, I do. Yes. Okay. okay. So Sarah says tips for free range parenting style. So she says you're quoting you yeah. just let them play, but how do you calm anxious minds to protect them from drowning, falling, tick bites, strangers who, slash who's predators? Mind is anxious. What's up? Who I want to know whose mind is anxious? The person who asked the question, or the imaginary people who are talking to her in her head? And I'm not saying that rudely. I'm saying, are you making up stuff? Are you have perceived um, pushback against how you want to? Re Plus, right now, nobody's interacting with anybody. So, like, completely flip everything we just said on the head. Nobody is interacting with anybody. Go mind your own business. Let your kids do their stuff, and then say, because COVID, yeah. like, you get that T-shirt <laughs> that Jason talked about, and be like, this is what's going on. But. Did she elaborate at all? Did we give her enough time? To no, I, and there might there. be a little bit of delay, so I'm well, not sure this we, jumps we'll off get that. Of, but. After Jason heard you speak at the conference you guys both spoke at, he came home, and our, I think our oldest at the time was like two or three, and he said, oh my gosh, Lisa said something that will forever change how we parent Lucy. And he said, she, you know, and maybe I don't want to say your story. So if you, once you figure out what I'm going to say, you can jump in. But that concept of like, if you don't let your kids mm, take remember. risks when they're little. Oh, you're going to grow up looking for it. Yep. Yeah. And the risks they take when they're teenagers are not the. There's bigger consequences. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So a couple things have uh, I've added to that conversation yeah. since you saw me. One is the same, which is if you don't get developmentally appropriate risk taking experiences when you're little, you're going to grow up looking for it. The thing that's so happening more now, even before COVID, is we have uh, an entire generation of risk averse children mm -hmm. who are scared to death to, to do anything. And that, again, I mean, I, I think I've listed four, and that's another conversation topic <laughs> for you. Um, but when we know, when, when people rattle off, like, the characteristics and the skills for the 21st century, you know, and it says collaboration and risk-taking and problem-solving and conflict resolution and collaboration and creativity, but I'm scared to do anything because I might not do it right or I'm going to get it wrong or somebody's going to be looking at me or I don't know what I'm doing. Right. We are not, we are not getting them ready for anything. But specifically to the question that was asked, you, you, there's a difference between a risk and a hazard. And there's other people who do a lot of good work on this. Um, Mike Huber is one of them. Um, but there's a difference between a risk and a hazard, right? A risk is, well, let me do, let me flip it. A hazard is something that perhaps a child might not see. So very easy, quick, general example. You're at a park playground, your backyard. There's a nail sticking out of the playground structure, right? There's cat poop in the sandbox. There's broken glass on the bench. Right. That's a hazard. That's on me. It's my job right. to do that quick walk around to make sure that the environment is able to be as hazard free as possible. A risk is an opportunity for a child to do a quick assessment Am I psychologically, physically, emotionally, am I ready to navigate this? And that's entirely different. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh my gosh. Especially seeing how everybody's reacted to these last five or six months. It's like, we so need to know how to do that. All of us, we need to be able to take risks in our industries and in our households and our relationships, right? This yep. is like the opportunity that is right in front of us. Yep. So. Well, this is not a question, but Cindy uh, Alderman Brown says, Lisa, I love your porch time story time. Oh my gosh. I miss reading to the children. I um, bet you do. And if you haven't, 
I don't care how old you are. Check out Lisa's Facebook page to let her read you a story because oh, you wouldn't know this, but it's nostalgia. actually a skill to oh, be able yeah. to read a children's book to a person or to an audience. Through, and, and through video. Yes. No less. That's a whole nother skill. But Jason and I were joked at the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. We're like, these people reading these books, don't they watch how this looks after? This isn't landing. This isn't, you can't even see the pages and your voice is, is like so muffled. And so Lisa, you nail that. And I are, as I told you before we jumped on today, our kids are just mesmerized by your presence, your storytelling ability. So thank you for gifting that to everyone. And most we important- We that fan base of the uh, 10 and under crowd uh, that I'm, I'm backfilling um, the pipeline <laughs> hey they're gonna be hiring you someday yeah. you know it's good it's smart all right lisa thank you so much for taking thank the time you. to be with us tonight i know everyone just in the I comments people are loving it to everybody who was following along and making comments i'm i'm sure at some point i'll be able to go back and and see them and maybe comment directly but That'd thank you awesome. guys kim yeah. jake keep shining work. your light we love it thank Thanks, you very lisa. much all right bye, bye. Oh my gosh, you guys, she's fabulous. And I just feel like, wow, she just explained. I felt like a little bit of a Mr. Rogers. I know we totally channeled, channeled yeah. Mr. Rogers. Five tonight. minutes before we started, we we're like, wait, what? We did You're not plan on this. This is just like, of course, we're going to wear Mr. Rogers tonight. But I feel like she channels his vibe. And, and when she talked about how she, when she's with kids, she's totally different. Boy, did that challenge my own mindset of like, sometimes... I, as, even as a teacher, I brought too much energy to the party and it kind of snuffs out their energy. So that's an interesting balance, right? Yep. Yeah, totally. Uh, just so much stuff to pick out there. As so I'm seeing me. your comments, how much you guys Love got it. out of it. So I'm, I'm glad. So let's go to the next thing. And now a word from our sponsors. Oh, guys, <laughs> we are down to what? How many days? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days. Oh, three, three days. Till Escape It All Hood Day. Escape It All Hood Day is uh, August 8th. And what we're inviting you to do is to do something to Escape It All Hood and then just share it online. Use the hashtag Escape It All Hood Day. And uh, if you do, you could win a prize. And that prize may or may not have something to do with this new thing we're launching also on Saturday called the Wonder and Whimsy Society, which is basically a secret society that adultitis does not want you to know about. And I'm pretty excited because on Saturday, we're going to be showing up live on Facebook on our Escape Adulthood page here four times to do something really fun with whoever's out there watching, all you guys, and to share a little bit at a time more about the Wonder and Whimsy Society because it will officially open uh, for members on Saturday, which yes. is amazing. So at nine, this is all central time, nine, 12, three, and six. So all the court, you know, the edges of the clock, we're going to be tuning in live with our family to kind of have shenanigate, celebrate escape adulthood day and share more about the wonder and whimsy society. Adultitis is going to be sore at the end <laughs> of the day. I can tell you Talk that. Wedgie. <laughs> So I don't know how to transition from that, but we I wanted to share a really cool video that Kim made uh, back. I'm tinkering, uh, she has guys. done a, a course, the last uh, couple couple versions of it called Wonder Hunt. And one of the things that she does is she goes out and looks for wonder. She hunts for wonder. And one of the, what a knack she has is finding hearts in nature. And some people have been able to pick up on that. Other people are their head is blown. Like I don't know how you can. Fine hearts, but she did a little a little video we wanted to share about how that process works, and she takes you along uh, with her. So let's check this out. One of the challenges in my Wonder Hunt course is to find a heart in nature. It has been interesting to hear people admitting their lack of confidence. Like I never thought I would see one. I've never seen a heart in nature. I didn't think there would be an opportunity for that today, but lo and behold, here at the end of the day, there it was. It is powerful to open your heart to an opportunity to find something good. And that is our job, that is our role, that is our important calling now more than ever. I figured it would be kind of a fun journey to walk the woods with you. I don't see any really obvious right now, but Let's open our eyes a little bit bigger 
and see what we find. I, I actually see a heart right now as I'm walking the path. Here it is, just popping out. See that little yellow heart? I just ask God to open my eyes in a new way to see the wonder that he has for me. And this does change me from the inside out. Okay, let's do something fun. I am going to walk up this path and I'm just gonna randomly stop at a section. We're gonna see if we can find a heart. This is kind of bold and courageous, but let's go for it. There are a few hearts, these little clover type plants. You know, I, when I was a kid, I used to think they were like four leaf clover. They are made up of three hearts each, basically, but that's pretty epic, you guys. Another one, but it's kind of hidden. I'm not sure that the camera will be able to grab it. I will try my best to capture it. I love hearts that have had insects chewing on them. Okay, I know this is really specific and, and funny, but there is something very poignant about a heart that looks a little beaten up, that looks like maybe not so perfect, and it's relatable. That kind of image really you know, helps me to heal my heart, I think because it allows for me to see the beauty in the imperfection and it invites me to be okay with that, which is quite a gift. Do not underestimate what this does for your heart and your soul and your mind. It is life-changing. Well, you know, I, it is one of those things that once you start seeing with new eyes, they just pop up. I mean, there's been walks where I've gone and I've seen like 30 hearts, which is mind blowing, but it is, your eyes just get open to it. Yeah. I, it, it, it's amazing to watch you. I mean, you, you see them and I'm like, well, yeah. but the kids are conditioned. The kids yeah. are seeing them now and they notice them more and um, yes, but it is, it's like a little, it's a little game. It's, it's a, little a little treasure hunt. Game. Yeah, it, yeah. It's awesome. So let's do some drawing, shall we? All right, you guys, we're going to move right into this drawing here. Uh, we're going to have a little fun drawing something a little bit different today. So get your pencils, your pens, your your markers, your whatnot. Post-it notes. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a, kind of like a little, uh, a little bean or sausage bean. oval thing over here. <clears throat> okay. And then I'm gonna draw another one down here. Okay. So we're getting, we're making little, seemingly random little Looks sausages. Like jelly beans. Little, yeah. yeah like little mm -hmm. like jelly beans. I'm gonna do another one over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then. I'm gonna draw one that sort of connects these two, and what's cool about this drawing is like you it, you don't have to worry about having them in a per perfect position. Like where you put them and place them will make the character of what we're drawing um, look different and add to the character. So I'm gonna draw another one in here, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of this one is kind of like behind, so we're getting these little legs here. And I'm going to color a little shadow in here so you can kind of see that this is behind it, right? <clears throat> okay, then we're going to draw this little tail. And the cool thing about this is like a little bean, but then there's this little thing that sticks out there. Like if you don't blow the balloon up far yeah. enough. <clears throat> oh, that's cute. And then we're going to do another bean up here. It's like little ears and another one behind it. And then the little nose is going to be like the little balloon tie area. So we got this floating little uh little balloon dog that's cute and now i'm gonna do a little color this in a little bit which is always kind of the fun part mm -hmm. <clears throat> by the way we forgot to mention at the top of the the hour to share the video so if you want to just go ahead and push share a lot of people say let draw with me um this is kind of a fun segment to share with people who are uh new to escape adulthood so oh, yeah. that's fun Let's okay so fun. now this get this colored in now here's where the kind of the magic happens a little, a little fun tricks i want to show you tonight so i'm going to do is a little bit lighter red okay and I'm gonna draw 
just kind of along the edge here. I love it when he I love it when he does those cuz right? these are this not just, things I know. These are just How do you the make little... it come alive? Now, right? here's to keep in mind is like I you decide that. where the light source is coming from. So I'm pretending the light source is coming from up here. So anything on this side of the form is going to be the light side. Hmm. And just adding this little rim, they call this like a rim light. Um, now this one, I'm just going Yeah, back. I was going to wonder, I was wondering what you're okay. doing with that one. Now That's here's, cool. here's another little trick. Now if you take the color of the background, and I'm actually going to make it just a little bit darker, and I'm going to do the opposite side. Oh, yeah. And that is going to bring in some reflected light. Huh. So, so in reality, light comes down from, um, where this red arrow is, bounces off the ground or the table or whatever it's on and reflects back up hmm. and you get this reflected light here. Interesting. Okay. And now just to make it pop, we're going to get some white. And then just at the very top, again, thinking of like, where, where is this light bouncing? Mm -hmm. And we make these little hot highlights, right? Hmm. Where you think it'd be bouncing right I there. love how you say like where you'd think it'd be bouncing well like, this guy sees things differently than most I know, I know. but the concept people. the concept is the same you're thinking about the easy. arrow <laughs> okay. and if you imagine okay. light coming down from that All arrow right, that. and imagine each of those beans being a three-dimensional item where is that gonna okay. gonna bounce mm -hmm. and now back to another trick that we talked about a couple weeks ago is you take the background color darken it a little bit and then you make this little oval yeah, underneath. Ben's been doing that a lot lately. And ben. this is the my handy trick to make anything more whimsical <laughs> by adding a shadow Levitation. so he's levitating and maybe, floating. Well, maybe you to levitate over just our kind, table. Just here. kind of like that, yep. <laughs> very, very cool. I love it. And, you know, I, I definitely think that um, when you know how to draw a balloon animal, life is better. That's just a theory of mine. Well, it's, yeah, it's been you scientifically even, proven. Has it? Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. People know that. Cool. All right, guys, this is pretty epic. Um, Jason has started a new painting, and I have to tell you, when I saw this on the easel the other day, I literally started crying. So I was like, hey, that's my photograph. And this is a first. Jason is using, this is the first time Jason is using one of my photographs as a reference painting or for his painting. So it was a pretty big moment. I was like, oh. I was excited. I didn't get to see the reaction, but I was like, I wonder when she's going to notice that this is her so that the main thing, this is, this is wet. And, uh, the only thing that's kind of done is this background yeah, it's cool. and it was really fun. I actually, it's, it's hard to see this, but I don't know. I found a picture. I got a, took a picture so that oh, you wow. can see the close up a little bit better and the <laughs> texture. Yeah. But I had so much fun trying to recreate this. They call it a bokeh effect in photography, which is, uh, you know, when the background looks, turns into like little flashy lights, you'll notice mm -hmm. it like at Christmas time, if there's Christmas lights in the background and there's like circles yeah. of color, it's when the, the foreground is in focus and the background is really out of focus, you'll get this mm -hmm. effect they call a bokeh effect. And so I um, have been working on that part of it hmm. here, which has been, I didn't think it would be as fun as it is. I've just been have you, loving, have you never painted that Not style? like this, no. Oh. So using oil paints to be able to create the real subtle shifts of color and stuff. And then the dandelion is going to be really tightly detailed. Um, and I don't, you, can you guys kind of tell that the inside is very much heart-like, which is what this photo really did show. So I'm pretty excited. It was cool to tie into tonight's heart hunt. But um, mm. that one, I don't know, guys, if we'll sell that original, that might be on our bedroom wall. <laughs> oh, really? Wow, we didn't talk about that. We'll have well, to see about that. <laughs> All right, friends. Yes, yeah, the time... art has been flying in. Yes, we, we so always appreciate... Charts. When you guys send in your drawings, I love seeing them. Last week we drew this uh, shark friend and everyone 
put their own little twist I on it. Helen guy. put the um, the little. I don't know if you can see. He's got the mom tattoo on his fin. He's got a little fin ring. Like Helen, a pierced I was going to mention this to you, but like it totally reminds me of Charlie Brown too. Like his mouth. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah that is funny. But then the mom tattoo kind of threw off. But I was like, I don't know. I see a lot of different things going on there. So very cool, Helen. That's pretty cool. And then mm -hmm. uh, Tracy Miller's got one, and she makes guy. the note that I think is hilarious that hers. She said hers looks like a soup can with teeth. <laughs> The way that the body shape came out, but I think it looks great. I, I think love it. Looks it. Great. It's awesome. Uh, Carolyn, nice little. I think this is ballpoint pen, I believe. I love you know, the very cross hatching. Simple, very good. Yeah. I like that. Did a lot of stuff with just a few colors there. Right. And then we had a mother daughter team. So Kira Moore Look and her shading. mom Amanda worked and did did two um, two drawings. So this is Kira's version. I they like did the it teeth too. together, which I love that. I love yes. the, the mother, daughter, father, son, father, daughter, mother, son, like yep. family affair. But here's uh, Amanda. So this is, this is the mom I love it. and very jolly little purple shark. But my favorite part, which I didn't even notice at first is she took real shark teeth that she had mm -hmm. uh, collected from somewhere, right? a trip Some maybe trips, or something yeah. like that. And those teeth are actual real shark teeth that she tied right into it. So, Which is really, you can kind of tell the shine off of them. That's very yeah, cool. Yeah, super Amanda. cool. So, of course, we've got, we got way more. It's harder and harder every week now to to pick some uh, because Keep we get so many in. good ones. KJ but please send them in to... Yeah, KJ mm -hmm. at escapeadulthood.com is a great place to do that. Uh, let's see the meme for the week. <laughs> if 2020 were a food truck, it would be liver and onions. Right? That's pretty I, much... There's a few of you that are like, I like liver and onions. Well, you know. <laughs> Not the rest of us, right? You can have them. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yes. on to some fun adultitis fighters. Yes, Jill Kellner put this up as her high five. So in the Escape Adulthood League, which the URL is there, escapeadulthood.me, join us. That's where the party is at, by the way. So Jill shared with us for High Five Friday, we're always sharing our, uh, our victories for the week that she got to sneak away and do some kayak on this beautiful lake and they even did had a little paddle fight which i was like "Ooh, that could get dangerous i yeah. don't think that would bode well for us <laughs> we were too competitive <laughs> someone would end up drowned in the right. lake probably and i'm not saying who it might be me and gail richardson oh we love you gail she told me a story about how she brought fresh flowers for her hairdresser to to spruce up her studio so we're all you know we got another covid haircut coming up um, you know, you show up with a mask, you feel so impersonal. Show up with flowers, too. I think that is such a cool inspiration. Yeah, and those little things that we can do for each other, where it's bringing flowers or like Lisa was talking about, yeah. leaving out chalk at the end of your driveway. Bubbles. It doesn't, it's not hard, yeah. but it's worth having the reminders of what little things we can do to help each other through this. For sure. And Karen this one's from Paul, a while ago, know, but we had to bring it up. We've never shared it, but we've been talking a lot about our rituals on Wednesday night as we prepare for the show. And Kara and Paul are doing nachos. And we actually were inspired by you guys tonight to take it to a different level, which I know I shared with you, Kara, but we did do tachos, tachos which tonight. we heard about on uh, Great American food truck race yes. with Tyler Florence. We the kids love watching that. And one of the food carts did tachos, which is nachos, but without chips, you have tachos. Like, yes, I did. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. So we did this for the first time tonight and it was it's a game changer, guys. Delicious. Everybody was all in. Highly so. recommend. We did we did ours with the tots and some taco meat with ground beef and chorizo, black beans, Tomatoes. cheese sauce and mozzarella cheese and cheddar it's cheese Wisconsin, melted. Guys, don't judge. Jalapenos, tomatoes, <laughs> sour cream. Oh, Although Rosa, I didn't eat the green stuff, so the jalapenos were for us. But. Yes, but it was it was good. So thank you for that inspiration. To totally. the Tracys and mm -hmm. uh, some yeah. more artistic uh, flair we, this week. We're, our theme this month is tinkering. So people are sharing their tinker projects. And so Jenny Mickle shared this really cool little Pinterest project that involves some cement and rocks and a bowl from Walmart. And it was like this fun little thing. She wanted to make a little fire bowl for their patio. So um, I thought that Love was really cool. really cool. Yeah, yeah, totally. And Julia R. Set, uh, put this up as uh, what she was doing to celebrate Coloring Pages Day, which was from the Celebrate Everything calendar, I think last week or the week before. I have a good um, example of how those things back from when we were kids can bring us some nostalgia, nostalgia and right? comfort, comfort in these times, right? For sure. And then Sharon Neiman, more tinkering, she cut up a box 
had all these pieces of cardboard and then just took some old, um, you know, paint that she had laying around and started doing some abstract art. How cool is that? I'm Pretty like, cool. we could totally do that tomorrow. So thank you for that idea, Sharon. And these are really rad. I love the one on the right with the purple. The purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a cool flair to it. I, I just think it's cool like to see these examples of different ways that our inner artist can yes. come out. Mm -hmm. And there's not, it goes to like Lisa said about play, that you're less concerned about the outcome and more about the process. And that's what true play is, is mm -hmm. just being lost in the fun. I think about uh, some summit, Escape It All Hood summits we've had in the past where yeah. we have an, some sort of art project. And it's my favorite part to see 75 people as if they're kindergartners focused mm -hmm. on their little mm -hmm. painting or doing their craft. And it's uh, it's awesome. So yeah. anytime we can tap onto that is a good yes. good thing. Thank you, Sharon. All awesome. right. Well, we've got uh, a giveaway coming up here. The people who have stuck around all the way to the yes. end. I know this has gone Thank a little you. bit longer than our usual show. But I think it's been fun. I think it's been good. I mean, it's tonight with Lisa was well worth staying up a little bit later. That was really, really cool. Yes. So our winner last week mm -hmm. was... Tanya Burchard. Congratulations, who Tanya. Who won the uh, pretty darn great shark print. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have our cool... Oh, we got bump heads here. Yeah. This is one of my that favorite. That would have been great. That would have been bunk. awesome with our uh, Mr. Rogers. So we've got a, a beach towel to give away this week. <laughs> and this one is got some... Uh, this was inspired by a trip to Mexico we took. And it says, enjoy the ride with some hot air balloons. We have this artwork. Of the original the of this artwork is in our bedroom. It yes, kind of matches our, our uh, bed covering. But um, super soft, super summery and playful. And that is the prize for someone who answers this question tonight. And the question is, we were talking a lot about play tonight. What was your favorite thing to play with as a kid that was technically not a toy? Ooh. So nothing that was under the tree Christmas morning. Not necessarily. Right. Yeah. Uh, other than the box. I mean, the box is yeah, a classic, right? right? Which is so, the joke of every So enter parent. your question, enter your answer. What was something you loved playing with? I mean, like for me, I would go to my grandma's house and uh, she let us have, she had a cool adding machine. Mm -hmm. Some of you uh, veterans here will Heavy. know that we had a freaking big machine was that was calculator? really heavy it was like a big calculator <laughs> that was 85 pounds and it had the little uh tape that you could add things up and there'd be the little tape that would come out yeah. and she would give us access to her jewelry box mm -hmm. and we would play jewelry store so neither the adding machine or the jewelry were technically toys yeah but I don't, I don't actually remember playing with toys at my grandma's house, but I remember playing jewelry store and we'd lay it all out on the, the couch and on the tables and the end tables. And we'd Isn't play, that a good lesson for people store. who are kind of, I know a lot of grandparents are hanging out with their grandkids these days and it's like, yeah, you don't have to go to Goodwill and get a bunch of toys. They kind of just will like your stuff. Like mine was a wheelbarrow. Okay. So uh, yeah. we would push that wheelbarrow through the ditches. We do like roller coaster wheelbarrow. rides. Wheelbarrow. Barrel? Barrel. Barrow. Yeah, it's not a barrel. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh-oh. I got to I, I don't know which one to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, I put up Sarah. She said tadpoles and baby peanut turtles. Yes. Angela's with me on the large cord cardboard box. Ben right. says popsicle sticks. Ooh, yes. So much to Picnic table tents. Ooh, Good one. Yeah, I love that. Right? Love that. <gasps> Clothesline tents. Mm. Right? Clotheslines. Remember Kim those? Kim says playing cards. Mm -hmm. Paul says my brother's drafting tools. Ooh, I hope he was okay with that. Uh, Chris, <laughs> Kristen also the grandma's old jewelry for dress up. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how about this one? My cat princess. There you Aww. go. There you go. That's great. Fun. We had a dog princess. We I would dress her up in turtlenecks. Right. <laughs> Which, I want to know more thing. about this poor one. Thing. Cindy says my mom's bowling ball. Oh. I can I I could awesome. imagine how that'd be fun, but I also feel like it would do a lot of damage <laughs> in the hands of a little kid. Like I I'm curious oh, about that. Man. Uh ooh, hay bales ooh. in the in the haymo making forts. Love that. Nice. Making music with wooden spoons. Mm, yes, pots and pans. Uh, let's see what Suzanne got. I would use the ironing board as the grocery store conveyor belt, Aww. brown paper bags, cans from the pantry, and my dad's adding machine to play grocery store. That yeah, just you know brought back machine, so right? many memories, Suzanne. Oh my gosh. That's really good. Right? 
Sarah says, I played library in the basement with my cousin because my grandma had tons of books. Uh, That's great. Mm -hmm. Armando, my money collection. My brother was in Vietnam and sent me coins from oh. all over. How often awesome oh is that? My gosh. That oh, that oh, that would have been so cool. Like to be like, oh, this, this different... is like my money. Like you can't play with real money usually, right? Yeah, that's really sweet. Sue says, I remember making bird nests when I was little. I used a frisbee and filled it with mud, grass, sticks, and water. Messy, but so much fun. Oh. I, that brings back memories. Did you do that? We totally yes. did that. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mud pies, all Acorns, kinds of. Acorns, sticks. Yep. Vicky says, forts in the grove. Mm, nice. Definitely my glasses, Stephen Aww, says. Yeah, that's not a toy, but yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> let's see what we got. Matt. Matt Moore says, uh, I made a tent out of a card table. Oh, this is from Amanda. Uh, and blanket at my grandma's house. Oh, yes. yes. Card tables are card great tables. for that, right? It's right. Perfect. Oh my gosh, the perfect size. You can yes. get a lot done on the cards underneath the card table. So keep those keep those coming in. We will uh, we'll keep this open uh, for a while, and we'll pick one after the show is over. Um, in the meantime, uh, yeah. again, so another reminder. Say it enough, you guys. This is this is like our biggest COVID blessing. Twenty years in the making. I we're kind of getting speechless about it, and that's not good because now we got to really start talking about yes, it. Yes, we. But it's, Pretty exciting. Actually, be opening the doors uh, officially here. You got something you want to play? Days. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I just yeah, baby. Yeah. I can't tell you enough how many hours of you know just in the last three months, but more so in the last twenty years, has gone into what we're about to open up and one thing we'll say we're going to share more and more as it unfolds on saturday but there is a limited amount of time that you can sign up yes the membership will close so don't you know think oh i'll, I'll check it out in a month no no it will be closed so that's one thing we just want to say yeah. so that you don't miss it and if you're not on the insider email list on Sunday mornings, make sure you are because you will get an email on Saturday with more information. Well, and we've had people, you know, we've, we have said it is a secret society that adultitis doesn't want you to know about. And when we first talked about that aspect of it, we had people saying like, oh, will there be a secret code? Will there be a yeah. secret handshake and sign? And like, yes, there's a secret code. We have a <laughs> there. There's like a secret decoder aspect to it sweet um, it's it's going to be pretty fun it's a year-long experience basically you will get a front row to the best of what we will be making and creating and we love creating experiences for people who honor their childlike spirit and that's what this is all about the other thing is that we kind of put our heads together you know everybody kind of reevaluated their priorities and how they're spending their time we did the same thing and by May and June, we're like, you know what? We want to do life with people that share this mentality. We want to share life with them. So if that, you know, that's basically who the members of the, the Wonder and Whimsy Society will be. These these people that, um, is he levitating? Yeah. <laughs> the people that need and want that childlike spark to stay bright throughout their life so that our legacies can be that. Um, I think if you get it, you do. If you don't, you don't. And it yeah. will not cool. be for everyone. And that's mm -hmm. what is really freeing about all of this, that it will be for the right people, which mm -hmm. we're really excited about. Baby Yoda. Oh, Baby Yoda. Yes. You're so cute. He loves what you're saying. He's, he's, uh, he's I buying him. in. I, we need right. a little sound of him, like his little noises or something. Does he have noises? Or is this in my head? I can't think of I'm Yes, he does. <laughs> I'm not going to. To, I mean, I'm not going to say him right now, but yes, I think he does. All right, all right that's a sign that we've been here too long. Yep. And we thank you for being with us all the way to the end. Uh, that is it for this show. Until next time, Adult Dietist Fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and be awesome.